Hey guys, it's Nino. Um, so I want to talk to you guys tonight uh, about the education system. I I work in education. I've been in education for about 10 years. I've worked with um, preschoolers all the way to, um, I'm currently with high schoolers. And I work in, um, college guidance in the Bronx. Um, and I had, you know, I, I teach, you know, college access to, to seniors and juniors. And, and I had this one senior, um, at the end of class when I'm talking to them about like picking their colleges and college prices and why it's important to pick in state colleges. And New York is, is unique in their, um, expansive resources and and options for low and, and low income and even um unimmigrant un, undocumented students um but it's unique new york is very unique and even so right i'm i'm talking to my students about prices and i'm talking to them about um how to pick the right college for you and i'm dismissing the students and one of my students stops me and goes miss and i and i go over to his desk and he tells me, miss, I don't have to pay for kindergarten through senior year. Why do I have to pay for college? It's not fair. I can't afford it. My family can't afford it. And I work at a school, so I couldn't put my two cents in about, you know, my progressive activism and, and all of that in so many words. But I don't, I don't understand. And I, I couldn't give him an adequate answer. Um, you know, growing up, my family, my parents were, my mother was undocumented. She's a, she's a legal resident, but you know, my father was a citizen and my sister was undocumented. And, you know, going through the process, it wasn't that she was illegally here. It was just that the process takes time. So as a senior, she applied to a bunch of schools and she was a great student and she got into Cornell University. But because she didn't know her options and because she was undocumented and because she was afraid to say she was undocumented, she went to Rutgers instead for, because of the in, you know, in-state aid and, and all of that. And it's, it's just not fair, right? It's like, A, our students don't know enough about the college process. And if you don't have the money to be homes like tutored and, and trained and primed and, and propped up from the time you're five years old or younger, you don't have access to the resources. So by the time you start thinking that college is a possibility, you're 16, 17, 18 years old. And at that point, you're screwed because no one can tell me that they didn't make colossal jerks of themselves in, in high school and made mistakes. You make mistakes in high school. That's what you do. And you don't think this is going to haunt me for the rest of my life because you're 14, you're 15. By the time you're old enough to realize that your actions, actions will affect your future, it's too late for you to turn back time and go back to, to freshman and sophomore year to fix your mistakes. And by the way, it's pretty much national that like sophomores tend to do worse, right? Because as a freshman, you're coming in, you're bright eyed and bushy tailed. You want to do well because this is a brand new school. You have a new start. Junior year, the end is in sight. So you're like, I got to buckle down. I got to get my act together. Senior year, obviously like first semester, you get that colleges are really looking now. So you're buckling down and you might be taking APs. So it's important. Sophomore year, you know, you're not, you have two years, you're not even halfway there yet. You, you're the, the newness of the school, the novelty is gone. So you stop paying attention. You, your grades dip. It's pretty common. But if you're, if you don't bounce back, if you don't have people telling you why they shouldn't dip, if you, if you don't have those tutors and all of these extras and the extracurriculars, it hurts you. And, and guess what? If you're an urban kid helping your family because you need to babysit for your mom because she works nights or 
earn a paycheck to help pay the bills. You don't have the extracurriculars to pad your, your um, transcript and your application. So I don't, like, in this election, we've talked a little bit about, because of Bernie, thankfully, we've talked a little bit about, you know, free public colleges, and I think that's phenomenal. And I think, you know, Jill Stein goes even further left and wants to talk about forgiving all student debt, which is amazing, and, and pretty much everybody I know would benefit from this. But even further than that, there's this institutional and and I don't there's institutional racism right but I don't want to talk about that per se in this conversation I'm talking about just instit, institutional disparity between what type of education you get in an inner city in a in a low income area versus the type of education you get in the suburbs right and and pretty much every friend I have that's been like looking to move or buy a house or, or any of that, they look at, oh, what are the schools like in that area? There's, I forget what, what country it is, but there's a country in Europe where there is no such thing as private schools. Why? Because the level of education absolutely everywhere in the country is the same. And they believe that by taking away private schools, the more affluent kids, parents, will be more um, invested in the school and therefore donate more money and make sure that that school does well for everybody because there are kids in that school. Our capitalist society is like almost promotes the idea of sending your kid to private school if you can afford it. So while the school in the same block that you're in of your child that you would be going to if you couldn't afford it is crap. You bust your kid 45 minutes and they get into Harvard, Cornell, and they're, they're a prep school kid and they're, you know, top of everything. It's disgusting. And if you, you, you might not know, the school system is funded by property taxes. So... If the housing in that town, in that district, has, is higher properties, like higher value in, in the properties, they get more money. So, on top, and on top of that, right, technic, like, along with the lower income housing, there's, it's buildings. It's more people per square mile which leads, it lends itself to more students per square mile. So while you have higher tax, property taxes, and houses, which means less kids, so nicer schools, more money, less kids, you have lower property taxes to invest in the schools, less money, you know, huge number of students per classroom, or huge buildings, and so the kids don't get nearly the quality of education that, that the suburb kids get. My nieces, they go to a suburb school. They do everything. Like, they are your typical suburb kids. They have after-school activities. They have private tutors. They, like, they play soccer, so they have a private uh, like coach for soccer so that they are not the worst kid on the team. Like, everything. And my sister, the reason I thought of this, this particular stream is because my sister wanted to give back and she decided to go to a low-income um, school in New Jersey to give back. And she came away with it. She called me right afterwards and was like, I can't believe, like, I, I, thought, I thought, you know, families were bad in those areas, but everybody was rude and everybody was... was just like yelling at the kids for no reason and it was just terrible and I just, I don't know what to make of it. And as you can probably imagine, she's a Republican. Um, so I had a real conversation with her like, yeah, yeah, it sucks. And that's why I fight for what I fight for because it's not fair that your kids 
were born no different in the same hospitals as these other kids. There was no sign on any baby's head that said meant for greatness and meant for poverty. Kids are born the same. There's nothing that labels them as stupid or, or having more potential or being more valuable when they're born. We're all worth the same. And it's terrible that my students have to look at schools and face sticker shock. I, I couldn't tell you the amount of students I have to walk off the ledge because they're like, I'm not going to college, I can't afford it. I don't even want to apply to colleges, it's so expensive, it's not fair. I, I couldn't even tell you. I, I stood up in the front of a class one day and I said, guys, I don't want you to look at the price. Nobody can afford, like none of you is going to be able to afford college. And one of them was like, why? Because, because we're poor? And I was like, no, because nobody can afford college. Everybody has student debt. Like this, it, this isn't a commentary on you guys. This is a commentary on how fucked our system is. And, you know, they, they, they don't get it. And why should they? It's, it's the system is stacked against them. It's not fair to them. It's never been fair to them, and it's not going to be fair to them. They can graduate college, and they'll still not be allowed. They could be doctors, graduated from college, from the best schools, and they still won't be allowed to treat somebody on the plane that's, that's having a medical emergency because their skin is black. How fucked up is that? They, they could be the smartest kid in the room, and they'll still get called out for plagiarism because they use the word hence. It's not, the, it's just not fair. And I am very fortunate that I got scholarships, that I, you know, was able to go to the schools that I went to, and I ended up going to Johns Hopkins, and, and I'm lucky. But not every kid is that lucky. It's, it's not fair. I have one of the top students in my school. She's top 10 kids in my school was looking at one of the city colleges, which is about $6,500 a year. It's very, very economically priced. Again, New York is very unique. And she wouldn't want to look at any other school. Her scores were great. Her grades were great. She, she is an awesome kid. And I talked to her and I said, why aren't you applying to NYU? And she said, it's too expensive. And I don't want to get my hopes up. I, I'm, you know, I'm not special. That's how these kids grow up, right? They think, oh, well, I'm just a kid from the inner city. I'm not special. You know, other kids get good grades. Meanwhile, I went to a prep school for high school. I got a full ride scholarship. I could tell you some of the freaking kids that I went to high school with were like straight D students and thought they were the shit and thought that they could talk their way and network their way into any school and that they deserved a place. This kid who busts her ass, who doesn't even want to talk to her father, who like she doesn't live with. And, and so on the financial aid forms, she's having trouble even filling those out because some of those forms ask for non-custodial parent tax information and he doesn't want to give it to her. This student is having confidence issues around I, how can I even apply to these schools? Guys, yeah, and I mean, to your point, Samantha, that's, that's why we need Jill. That's why we need progressives in office. And as much as Jill is great and we're going to fight for Jill, a week from today, we need progressives in office everywhere, not just president. Because even if Jill is president come January, she's not going to be the one that's going to be able to make that difference, right? Like, it's not on the president to to change the educational system. That's like a, a local, statewide, like countywide stuff. We need progressives to start uniting and fighting on the local level. This, this is just too big a mountain. And, you know, I, I talk a lot in my streams about the like humanity and humanizing each other and like why we need to fight for, for people. And, it's because I work with kids every single day from 
the three-year-olds that I used to treat, the two-year-olds that used to come in crying their heads off because they're being separated from their mother, to my juniors whose faces just shrink when they get a bad grade and who have to play the, I don't give a shit, it's no big deal, because they think there's something less than to admit that you need help. They're just kids. And if you remember what it's like to be a kid, you know how scary and like uncertain and like everything just looks like it's going to fall, fall apart. Adolfo, to your point, I, I don't think more funding is, is the answer. And the reason, be, the reason I don't personally believe that is because you can't just throw money at problems. Right? Like that's, that's the corporate crap that got us to where we are today. The, the reason why the, the thing that's going to help this is policy changes is, is understanding that like we need to even the playing fields, we need to get good teachers in, in these schools, in these areas. Some, you know, the, there's something to be said about charter schools and I've used to work at charter schools. So personally, I don't have a problem with them if they're run correctly. And the reason that the ones that, that I have had experience with have worked is because the teachers aren't pigeonholed into like, you can only, you, you know, the union rules of like only seven hours or you can only teach X amount of time. The teachers where I worked worked 10 plus hour days in the school. Now that's not adding in lesson planning. That's not adding in, you know, um, grading. Teachers work their asses off. I think I think it's policy changes, yeah, Adolfo, and and people who really genuinely care that aren't in it for the tenure. Um, I haven't read it, Tara. Uh, I'll look into it though. I think, um, I mean, I've I've read a lot of teaching books because that's my passion. Uh, not policy, not necessarily, not a lot of that, but I, as I'm. As I'm like finding my passion in within the real progressives realm, I'm 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 going to be more read in the political stuff, um, especially in education because that's where my passion is. But I think, you know, I, I wanted to do this stream because I I have about 200 students on my caseload. I have the 11th graders and the 12th graders, and I teach them college access, why college, how college, scholarships, everything. I have undocumented students. I have high flyers. I have, you know, Miller Roads, and I have students that were just lucky if they graduate. And I'm a voice for all of them. I advocate for all of them. And I love all of them. I will not... And I, I refuse to abandon any of them. I have kids who only want to do the military and I fight with them every day telling them, you make more money in the military if you just go to college. You'll start off with higher salary. Like, we, you know, and, and it would kill me to have them go to the military, go fight for a country that doesn't give a shit about them, to be honest, but I can't tell them that in so many words. I, it, it kills me to see my kids struggling. And, and it's struggling, they're struggling not because they're not capable of greatness, but because they're in a country that doesn't value their instructors. Because they're in a country that doesn't value the building that they're in. Or the, the materials that they get. In, in the South, where the, text, your, the textbooks are allowed to have sh shit like creationism and and all this other crap and won't teach evolution and all this other crap that's just like proven and accurate. How do we expect our students to survive in an international market? We're, we're in the age of the internet. So you, I, I work in New York, but my work extends everywhere just because that's the nature of uh, the scope of any job today, your, your job by nature of it being within the internet age is reaching far wider than just your little corner of the world. 
So we are raising students to, to know nothing about the world and then expecting them to go and fend for themselves in the world. That's insane. When I was in Spain, I, I babysat and tutored a sixth grader, a fifth grader. A fifth grader got a private tutor to learn English. I was a babysitter slash English tutor in Spain. And he, his um, history class had him learn all of the countries, capitals, locations, mountains, and rivers in Europe. That's a great education. Plus, he was learning English in school. He was learning French in school. And he was learning, learning German. It's, we are so far behind the curve. Even if you just take away the disparity within the United States, just the United States education system is shit. Finland is, is up there right now. And Finland, I believe I saw a statistic somewhere that like 20 years ago or something, Finland and the United States were in the same level. And then at that time, Finland invested in, in higher salaries for their teachers. I think they're the ones that took away the private, private education system. And they, they completely revolutionized their education system. They invested in it right then and there and changed it up completely. Now they're number one. We didn't do shit and we're worse off than we were. And here's, here's why that's important. In, in a world where everything is being politicized, where, you know, you can't fucking buy chicken at the local joint because they are opposed, somehow a chicken place is opposing gay rights and that's okay. Or, you know, you can't go to the bathroom because somehow, you know, bathrooms are now a political stance. I have seen that Adolfo. It's a phenomenal movie. I highly recommend it, even though Michael Moore is sucking right now. Um, Where to Invade Next is a great movie. Um, but in a world where everything is politicized, it breaks my heart to make education political. It's so stupid that it's a political platform. Not because it shouldn't be, but because what is more important than our kids? Like, what can anybody tell me what is more important than a child in this world? And we treat the people that are around our children like shit. We nickel and dime teachers who are with the students more waking hours than parents. We, we, you know, equally nickel and dime babysitters and all of that, right? But, like, teachers have your most precious thing, your most precious, I don't want to say possession, but, like, your most valued treasure are in your educator's hand. And, you're, and people bitch about not wanting to give more funding to schools, and people bitch about, like, all of these other things and like, how does that make any sense? And if we take a more global step back, right? And you say children, and we keep with a theme of like, children are the most precious thing. Globally, what, what Hillary is doing to the children in Syria, what our politicians have just labeled casualties and, you know, casualties of war or like just, um, I'm blanking on the word, but just something that happened, right? Like a mistake. We are not only fucking our own kids over by our lack of empathy for humanity, but we are dehumanizing and killing and injuring kids all over the world. And, you know, I, I got on this stream to just kind of talk about education in general, and, and, like, I'm very passionate about it. 
but get involved locally. You know, even if you're not a parent, get involved locally because here's the thing, you're not a parent, but you know a parent. You don't have kids, but you know kids. And they're being screwed over by these systems that just aren't working. And your neighbor, you know, has has kids and your neighbor works and doesn't have time and like educate them. Let them know what's going on in the local schools. And yeah, in some neighborhoods, like in the suburbs, the schools are phenomenal and everything is great. So educate them anyway. Because why is that fair that everything's great in those neighborhoods? But three miles away, those kids are, are barely making it through. How is that okay? And, and why are we as Americans okay with that complacency of like, my backyard's fine, so I don't have to deal with anybody else's. We aren't making inroads currently, or haven't been historically, I guess, making inroads on progressive movements. Because there's no solidarity. I mean, honestly, if I had to pinpoint it to one thing, that's it. And I've said this on many of my streams. I'm not black, but I fight for Black Lives Matter. And, you know, I fight for every single progressive um, cause that, that I know and care about. I'm not Native American, but I, I stand with Standing Rock. And, yeah, I'll, I'll do that, Adolfo. I have to find some stuff, but I'll post it. But for, for me, it's just as important to stand for our children in our towns, in our districts, as it is to stand with the children in our state, in our country, in, our, in the world. Otherwise, guess what? If you've ever seen the movie Idiocracy, we're going to live in it. And I, I personally hated that movie and my, my husband and a friend of ours made me watch it and it just made me cringe. But we're there. A reality TV star candidate versus a wrestling candidate, it's all pretty much the same. So that's all I wanted to say and I'll post some, um, some education stuff on uh, and, you know, I'm, I'm definitely open to questions because it's something that I'm learning about. It's something that I'm passionate about. And I live it, right? Like, I, I'm with students every couple days. Um, and so thanks, you guys, thanks for listening. Love you guys. Bye.